You're listening to the Ballet Piano Podcast, lifting the lid on dance accompaniment. Hello, listeners, and welcome to this episode of the Ballet Piano Podcast. In today's episode, we've got another in conversation for you with a brilliant person who we will introduce in a second. But first, around the boardroom table is <laughs> Mrs. Hobson. Oh, hello. <laughs> that caught you by a shock, didn't it? That was a shock for you. <laughs> Mr. Hobson. Hello, sir. I'm Matt Gregory, by the way. And our special guest today is Cyrus Gabrish. <laughs> Good afternoon. <laughs> Thank you. How are you, Cyrus? I'm very well, thank you very much. Thank you for having me on the show. Well, yeah, thank you for coming on. So for our listeners, Cyrus is a ballet pianist like us, but you also play for contemporary as well. I do. And silent movies. And compose. And Cyrus was in a band. Were you? That's true. I didn't know you dug that up on the internet. Oh, I really dug okay. on you. <laughs> well, uh, just while we're starting, can we go right back to the beginning? Tell us how you started playing the piano. How, yeah, how that so, all happened. Yeah, I, I was uh, very unemployed living in Newcastle um, a good 25 years ago. And uh, and there's a friend of mine um, who was in a band with me. And uh, I used to play keyboards in this band. Right. And um, he noticed I could improvise a little bit in C minor. And he... Um, <laughs> C minor! <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> of all the keys... <laughs> And he introduced me to a friend of his who was running a contemporary dance course in in Newcastle at Dan City. Right. And so that's where I got started. He was a Graham teacher, so he, you know, taught me the ropes. So the and, real thuddy yeah, Graham he, stuff. He played percussion. He played uh, he played great congas. Oh wow! And uh, and he just sort of browbeat me into uh, uh, being a Graham <laughs> Graham accompanist. But before and, that, were you playing piano as a child? Mm, a little bit. Yeah, I did grade four. Grade four. <laughs> <laughs> So you've always played piano then? Since I was about 14. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it started yeah. quite late. Yeah, I did actually. I was about 12, 11, like first year high school. And so you say about 25 years ago is when you started, you got noticed and you started playing for contemporary first. I, yeah, I played for contemporary and there were obviously there weren't many people in Newcastle who were playing for class. So yeah. um, And this is where I bumped into my first ballet pianist who... I actually uh, met on Yorkshire Seminar this uh, the, last week. And the, uh, the infamous David Plumpton. <laughs> oh, Plumpton! He was the, he was the first, first ballet accompanist I met. And I sat in and I watched his class. And I remember watching my first ballet class. And, um, and I was just looking at these people holding this piece of wood. You yeah. know, moving yeah. their legs around. I had no idea what they were doing. Cyrus, in 2003, I had no idea what it was. the first ballet pianist I sat in and watched was Dave Plumpton. At Northern School of Contemporary Dance. <laughs> He's taught us all. He's, he? yeah. Yeah, yeah. Didn't teach me. No, that's on me. That's why you two are really good and we're not. <laughs> <laughs> Only joking, David. <laughs> no, he was super back then. And mm. uh, yeah, no, I watched him play. And then I started started playing for ballet class, but really primitive sort of. But um, where for you did the, the, the improvisations come from? If you didn't have sort of a, a typical classical training. I think it was in the Graham say, classes because it was really, because it's, it's quite free harmonically. So I just got to mess around in C minor and then I discovered, after that I discovered <laughs> F minor. That was quite a revelation. C on and F off. Yeah. <laughs> so you're literally and sort of finding your way. I had to find my way key by key. Yeah. On the job. Yeah. So I've nearly wow. got to A flat. <laughs> <laughs> but Major. contemporary is good for that though isn't it because it's that's that's how i started and it's groove based because i did a lot of training as a jazzer yeah. when i was a lot younger yeah. and a lot of it is groove based so that's how i thumping, learned wasn't it? yeah and just, just thumping and, out like the, the weird the yeah. sort of um, time signatures and counts and mm. accents that contemporary and graham requires for mm. sort of like the, for what are they called like when you're leaning forward and the bounces mm. and things like that it's it gives you a good grounding i think because then Playing in phrases of eight and pretty little ballet tunes. It's like an <laughs> absolute relief, walk in the yeah. park afterwards. Well, I, mean, yeah. I think this is how I got to London because um, the, the teacher I had in, in in Newcastle, he had good connections with London Contemporary. Right. And so he made a call. You know, I said I wanted to go to London. And so he made a, he made a call and he said, I'm sending this guy down. Can you check him out? And, uh, and I went to London Contemporary and they put me with a uh, teacher, Ronnie Emblem. Yeah. Oh, um, Ronnie Emblem. Who I, I think was well known for chewing up pianists and uh, 
as a high turnover and she put me with him as a little <laughs> you know just to uh, run me through the mill yeah and i came out smiling i thought it was wonderful you oh, know yeah. all these eights you know and someone being mildly polite to me <laughs> and uh, i was uh, and i and i don't know that got me the job i think because i just survived you know and, mm, yeah so before that, you'd been used to all the irregular phrasing of contemporary. Mm -hmm. And then obviously eight, eight, eight count phrases feels much easier. Yeah. And then you mm. can't go back, can you? I mean, when someone throws a 5-4 at you, then... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, what you've got eight, you can't yeah. go back. <laughs> you can't go back, no. Did you only play piano for the contemporary classes or did you play like percussion or other instrument? Uh, I used to mix it up a bit, yeah. I used to If there was uh, some congas in the room, I'd mm. stick them between my knees and try and... Right hand, giving a something. right hand bit of rhythm and left hand bass. <laughs> yeah. So what, what year was that when you came to London then? Um, you remember? I think maybe 96. Yeah, okay, and started at London Contemporary, yeah. and then yeah. obviously just presumably started a freelance career. Yeah, it's been freelance ever since. Mm. Yeah, I've never, never signed that employment dotted line. No, yeah. me either. Mm. <laughs> you two are very wise. <laughs> yeah. Well, when you freelance, if, for me, it's all I've known. Yeah. Well, really, you know, chasing the next paycheck and then mm. you know the next gig and all the rest of it. So yeah, you get I'm used sort of, to it. You get used yeah. to it. Yeah. yeah, but then the freedom that it brings as well. Is is fab? It's an I, illusion. I, I'm the freedom's an illusion. <laughs> <laughs> well, it can be an illusion, can't it? Because you do end up always saying yes because you never know what might be around the corner, like mm. what happened in 2020, which was the worst around the oh, corner yeah, ever. That's true. Hopefully, there won't be another one. Yeah, it's slightly binding. I think you've said that in the past, Matt, haven't you? Like, you know, you do have the freedom to choose exactly what you want to do, but mm. you will say yes because you don't know what's going to happen in six months time sometimes yeah, yeah but for the past three weeks we were just saying in the lift as well i've had mm. a, pretty much all my mornings free because it's been the easter holidays mm. and there's mm. not a lot going on yeah. you know mm. so i know getting voice notes from you when you're not in a, in a ballet class <laughs> <laughs> in the gym yeah um but back to cyrus oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. <laughs> how did you get over to the u.s you've really been digging up the <laughs> 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 Because you, you, you worked a, over there for a little that's, bit, didn't that's you? That's a little story, yeah. No, I, I, I met someone, I think, in 99 yeah. who, was, who was American. And I was, I was I don't know, I'd run, out, I'd run out of steam with London. I needed a big change. Mm. And, and so we went and uh, uh, we set up in, in, in New York. And I think we lasted about three weeks and then we split up. And <laughs> oh, I was, so it was someone, oh, someone that oh, we're yeah. going out with? Yeah, yeah, I was going out with oh, them. And, and then I was stranded in New York. So, oh, really? And I thought, well, now I'm going to stay. Let's see what can Just happen. Just do a little yeah. bit. And back then, I have to be careful what I say, but um, back then <laughs> uh, the, the schools were, let's say, a little bit more um, easygoing yeah. about yeah. hiring people and mm. things. So um, they kept me busy for a while. And, but uh, you played for the Ailey Company and, and Steps. No, and... I never played for Ailey. No, I, oh. played, I played at Steps. Oh, sugar, my, my notes. No, I <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Scrap that. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you, you played at the Oaten Classes and things in New York for a bit. Yeah, I think uh, mm. well, it was Perry Dance, wasn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Steps and, and uh, Dance, somewhere down on Broadway. Um, it was like a dance works down. I can't remember the name. Right. It was a dance space or something. And, um, Broadway Dance Centre, Steps, had Limon, Perry Dance. Cunningham, mm. the Graham School. Um, yeah, no, I got around, yeah. Oh, nice. It was good fun. It was really mm. good fun. Yeah, I miss it a lot. And I remember it, there was something psychologically a lot more liberating about what you could get up to in class. I, mean, I remember mixing up a lot in, in ballet, ballet classes and contemporary with kind of keyboards and stuff. Right. And being all other, all mm. that in before everyone was doing all the loops yeah. and stuff. Mm. And yeah. Um, I had great fun in the classes there, yeah. It was just hot in the summer. Yeah. In the summer particularly, yeah. yeah. I remember I remember leaving the studio at six o'clock in the evening one, in the middle of summer once, and and they had these huge fans blasting mm. in the studio. Mm. And, and, and it was unbearable in the studio. Loud. And I just thought, at least at six o'clock, I'm going to get out the door, out the lift, and yeah. get a bit of fresh air. And it was hotter outside. Oh. I, was in I was in tears. Well. <laughs> I've been in New York in August, and it's ridiculous. Yeah, that was, uh, that, yeah. was, that was tough, that one. Yeah. Um, so you stayed out there for a bit and then came back yeah. to London. Yeah, I did. I was back there to for, freelancing in London. I was there for, there for about two years. And, okay. And then oh, wow. came back, and then I don't know where I went after that. Picked up where Maybe, you left yeah, off. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> came to EMB. No, I started at EMB Company. That's how, right. did that, yeah. how did that happen? I think... Maybe Matt Skoog had just left and then Wayne had taken over. Mm. And, um, yeah, I mean, that was a real induction into ballet playing there. Yeah. Yeah. 
I was yeah your first was big company class is a, is a mm. you know when I met you first time I was still a student and I wanted to be a ballet pianist and I was observing absolutely everybody I was like can I observe can I observe and how I, did you do it sorry <laughs> looking cute please, please. <laughs> so I'm was, so cute <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just please can I? I'm very young. Can I observe? Uh, and so I was was very kind to let me observe quite a few of his classes, including ballet and then contemporary. And obviously, I observed any other ballet pianist before. And then when I heard him playing, it's so different to anybody I heard. Yeah, and I was like, oh my god, this person is just genius. Mm. He just it just the sound comes from piano, yeah. not the way that I, I expected. Because obviously I'm classical trained and my improvisation, everything is classical based. Mm. It's just always like go against of what I expect. And it was amazing. And then when I heard you playing contemporary, I was like, oh my God, I cannot do this. <laughs> So I remember saying everybody that, you know, Cyrus is a genius. <laughs> he, I don't know how he does it. And also, because you're left-handed, aren't you? How do you know? <laughs> because, no, 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 and I your noticed. inside leg measurement is. <laughs> so when <I> was, <laughs> because when I was watching him improvising, yeah. it looked like to me, his left hand is dominating rather than right hand. Mm. Because, you know, uh, as a classical trained pianist, it's always right hand doing the melody. Yeah. And then left hand is doing a p- accompaniment. It wasn't like this mm. when Cyrus mm. plays. And then I just suspected you might be left handed or something. <laughs> and you are. I am. Well, I'm left handed too. Mm. But I do a lot of right handed things. Yeah. Mm. And I think. Sorry. <laughs> I knew something was coming. Sorry. <laughs> this one. Get out of the gutter, you. Right, right, okay, right. I'm back around the table now. Out of the gutter, sorry. You know, because growing up in primary school, it, like, you right-handed pencil sharpeners. Yeah. This is, I just used my right hand, even mm. though I wrote with my left hand and did mm. everything else with my left hand. Um, but, yeah, playing piano, it's right hand is melody and all mm. those mm. things. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I think I think the, a lot of the left hand came from the Graham classes, just um. thumping it out on a really bad piano. And then uh, you're left with this kind of uh, um, imbalance, you know, in your playing. And because for the Graham stuff, it can just be whacking it, can't it? I mean, it's, it, rhythm is more important than melody or harmonic progression and mm. things like that. You know, if you can get a bit of harmony in there and make it interesting, that's good. But yeah. it is secondary to the rhythm. Yeah. That is being provided, I think. Isn't yeah. it? No, no, C minor went a long way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether you, you find as ballet pianists. Like my left hand is, it, it feels like it's stuck in the claw, you know, striding and playing chords. Yeah. And my right hand is much more dexterous, mm. you know. Mm. Do you find that? And that's, you know, like built for purpose sort of thing. The longer you do it. I feel like my left hand needs to go back to school. It needs to go yeah. back. It needs to go back and, it needs to go back and do five finger piano exercises. Yeah. But it's, it's felt like that for a long time. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's now stuck. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I feel like that. Every year it's going to get more clawy or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Be like one of those old conductors you've got to prise the baton out of their rigor mortis ridden fingers in the end. <laughs> <laughs> How vile. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> so, Cyrus, where where did the band come from then? You tell me. I mean, it just... <laughs> 2009. You've got the, 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 the yeah. dates on the internet for Cyrus's gigs okay. in 2009. Uh, what was the what was the band called? I've got it written down. How do you pronounce it? It was called the Zizani. That's the one. Yeah, even I can't pronounce it. Zizani. This is an e. I think it's Mark, like a twelve-piece band. Yeah, I think Mark Lamar once described it as um, some kind of special offer in a pound shop. He sounded like <laughs> <a musical. laughs> in a pound yeah. shop. <laughs> but, um, so how is that all set up? Um, I, got, I got, I got. When I was in New York, I, I got really into songwriting, and I wrote some incredibly bad songs, really um, lugubrious kind of numbers and and i woke up one day and i just thought this is really dire you know I mean, you need to write something with a bit of, you know a bit of balls you know yeah and, uh, and um and i was really into tom waits at the time and and i just thought this is really good fun i love his music and it was and i just loved the 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 vis uh, the visual aspect of his music and 
And at the time I was really struggling with my relationship with music because mm. I found it a little bit, I, I always found mu music itself really nebulous for me and I'm trying to find some imagery just to get me through. And I think mm. maybe for, maybe this is quite a common thing, you know, with accompanists, we need to kind of see what we're playing. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and without that, it, you start to kind of free fall, you know, with, 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 with your writing and compositions. Yeah. And so... I found in the songwriting, I needed things to be really visual. I couldn't just talk about some, ab sing about some abstract thing. And and that, and that I just went down that rabbit hole of this sort of weighting world of, mm -hmm. of, of, of writing. And it just, it just was a lot of fun. And then I got a band together and. and Did you had, set it up? I set up the band. Yeah. yeah. And I, and, and I just found some really super people really quickly and. And we got out there gigging and before I knew it, we had a manager and wow. he was wow. quite well connected. And That's pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, he, he got things rolling very quickly for us and we were doing festivals and, and, and then our big gig was, uh, was at Latitude a long time ago. It's on the, uh, I think the, the arts arena, it's like Friday night. Wow. And, and I think that was kind of the end of the band. Right. We, we hit, we just sort of, we went as far as we could go and then we sort of all started breeding and fell to pieces. And, yeah, well, Latitude's not and, um, a bad place to bow out, it, it is it? Good. That's yeah, all right. It That's, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but it was exhausting. You know, I could see what the journey was. You know, it was, you know, living out the back of a minivan on yeah. in, in sort of knee-deep mud for many years and I, just, I felt... Yeah, maybe this isn't my calling in life. So uh, it, well, it, it says it says on the internet, Cyrus is a misfit in the British music scene. <laughs> Would that be fair to say? Misfit in most scenes. <laughs> <laughs> it also says, and I wrote it down. Misfit in gravel Brit voice. Society. It says. That you... <laughs> <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> you got so many taglines: gravel voiced, <laughs> Russian Polish, singer pianist. <laughs> It's like your this Tinder profile. That's not what I said. It's done really well. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what I think, though? And, and like we can say this because there's four pianists sitting around the table mm. now. All of us in some way are slight misfits to music society. How in very some way. dare you. Oh, no. Yeah, how dare you. But we are slightly. <laughs> there is some, there's, there's something that we don't, that, and I think a lot of accompanists, certainly class pianists particularly, we don't quite conform to what society expects as mm. a freelance musician. Mm. Mm. It's like if, if you go to Vision Express to get your eyes tested and they say, what do you do? I'm a musician. Yeah. And they sort of look at you and they go, okay, maybe he plays in a in a band in a pub or yeah. he's in a West End show or he's in an orchestra. Yeah. So that, and they say, oh, what do, you know, what do you play? Piano. Oh, that's amazing. What do, you, what do you do? I play the piano while people point their feet and bend <laughs> their legs and jump up and down. That's my job. Yeah. And it's, it's a weird sort of, mm. it's a weird sort of cross- plane where we live and work but not a lot of people and more people understand it now because of the ballet piano podcast <laughs> yeah. it's it is a weird place where we live can i just this is nothing to do with cyrus but <laughs> once i was traveling back to london at the at the passport control because i'm immigrant they you know they always question like five ten questions what do you do and then and so i said well what's your occupation so i said ballet pianist and then the I say cast the pass at the custom. He he was writing something and he stopped writing. Look at me, said, "That's I've been working this job for fifteen years, and this was the most <laughs> interesting job that I have ever heard." <laughs> <laughs> so it is very unique, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. I always say I'm a pianist, and then I say, "Oh, I work with ballet dancers." I sort of phrase it that way. Oh, I don't. I go straight in. I go in for a penny. I go. I go deep with it. I jump in with both feet. <laughs> what do you say, Cyrus? I'm a ballet class accompanist, yeah. but there's very much ballet these days. I never say dance accompanist. Yeah, because that was a I big thing. Contemporary for... Did you not play contemporary at all much? No, no, no. It's been a, it's been a long time. Yeah. And is that because <laughs> they're sort of using recorded music more for contemporary? Do you mm. think? I think I've I turned up at a class. A contemporary class. I covered a contemporary class last year, mm. and I remember the teacher looked at me aghast. Was like, I don't know what to do. You know, yeah. they were, oh really? I'd never used a music a piano player before. Right? No. It's piano, but I, know, but I know they probably have musicians in with, yeah. with the percussion and yeah. the loops. And yeah. I was say, has piano yeah. become a little bit old hat for contemporary now? Because like, hat, I think, when yeah. I think when I started in two thousand and three, mm. piano was I don't know it sort of died out, and obviously the percussion was will always be there in live percussion. Mm. But then the, the loopers were coming in, the percussions with the loops, the, the guitarists with the loop. Yeah, the loopers. Yeah. 
I, I want to be a looper. I'd love to be able to. I don't know how to. I've got a loop pedal. I don't know how to use it. It looks very cool, doesn't it? It does. Why don't you try? Joshua's got one. No. I yeah, don't. practice makes perfect. <sighs> I'm busy. <laughs> do, do you have any preference of like playing for contemporary ballet classes? Definitely ballet. Why? I think because of where I started out, you know, in this singular key. And, and I think in ballet is where I can really explore music um, and harmony and you know, melody and just the fundamentals, you yeah. know, of, uh, of creating music. Whereas I felt in contemporary, I, I really got quite, kind of stuck in a loop you know, with, yeah. with with just kind of grooves I'd created. And that, I found like I wasn't really exploring, you know, the next level of music for me. Whereas in ballet, I found like I've just, I've, there's been lots of different paths you can take with yeah. it, you know, mm. with the extemporization mm. and imp- improvising that you do. And That's funny though, because a lot of the classical trained pianists who you know, predominantly specialize in ballet will say the same thing about contemporary yeah, you know, I mean, that like, frees them up. Yeah, that if, you know, the, the freedom. You're not constrained by the eight count phrases. You're not mm. listening. You're not anything. Well, you're not constrained by eight counts, but you do still have the structure that you work within. It's not just a. It's not just a random free for all. Mm. Mm. I don't think I could play for contemporary. I have think... you played contemporary, Akiko? Not really. I just. I, I wouldn't know where to start. <laughs> I think I... there's a big fear about sort of people who specialize in ballet. Yeah. This contemporary fear and it and it's, it goes to it goes the other way as well like contemporary pianists who will have a fear about playing for a classical ballet class yeah and it's a bit it would be a little bit like you know you playing your first ballet class it wasn't perfect by any no. stretch but it was you the more you do it the more confident and the more understanding that you get from it it's like like you know what a ballet pianist sorry you know what a ballet dancer needs mm. for their warm class or for their technique class in the morning, you'd learn that about what a contemporary dancer needs. So it's, yeah. just, it's, it's there's so many similarities. It's just sort of like the paths are just slightly different, but this it's still the same. Mm. It's just the you know it's the musicality style of it is slightly different, but it's it's great to explore and it's great. You should do it. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> I've said on the pod many times, haven't I? When you're sort of thrown into it by accident or on my horror stories, yeah. Or, or sometimes someone will teach a ballet ballet class. It's not classical. It's a bit mm. more modern. It's a mm. bit freer. Um, that's probably as far as I'll go. Well, that, when we used to work in the Western Hemisphere together, mm. Akiko came to watch a couple of my contemporary classes. Yeah. Did I play some? No. I think I threw you on for one exercise and you freaked <laughs> out and walked away from the piano. In Did that, I? In that awful gym downstairs <laughs> for anybody who's ever been to the Western Hemisphere. You're like, oh, this is amazing. Like, well, it's not amazing. It's just like, a, it's a relatively simple improvisation, but it just happens to fit what's going on mm. in front. Would you say to play for contemporary, you've got to be like, Park at improvising. The thing is, it's not about melody, is it? Yeah. No. No, it's about feel. I mean, you've yeah. said this. About, it's, and, and it's color feel and texture. And, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think with, with contemporary, I, I had, I had more of a library of music of grooves that I would just pull up. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you kind of they crop up maybe more often than they do in ballet. Certain rhythms, mm. you yeah. know, like the triplet rhythms. Yeah. And yeah. So you know, and, yeah. you, and you see them coming, and you've got one or two or three. Yeah different ideas you can play around with you know that are really built into your left hand yeah. so you can mm. drive it along mm. and then you just met then you then like, you just mess around like all the that, like the yeah, fun yeah. stuff like the triplet walks in the corner one mm. two three one two three one two one two yeah. one two all that but when you don't have anything for some of these very specific contemporary sort of tempos and, and grooves then it's really tough to play. It, that's uh, like if a teacher be... will say oh we do this one on the lilac fairy thank yeah. you like, well the lilac fairy's not in my fingers is it anita young <laughs> so cyrus i love it when we come out of a break i know i I always do that don't i (laughs) Cyrus. how did you how did the whole silent movie thing come about then Oh, How through did the you get Sweeney, into that? Through John Sweeney. Right. Um, Legend. He, mm. he I, I, I was, uh, as always, very uh, very ignorant to um, what I was about to get involved with. And, and that was the silent film scene. And I'd seen John play a few silent films. Yeah. And, you know, and the first time watching uh, John play is, a, you know, it's a, it's a revelation. You, it's quite you, you forget it's yeah, live, don't yeah. you? Yeah. You forget. Mm. You, yeah. I, you're just so into the film because of what he's creating. Mm-hmm. Was amazing and, and um, did he sort of 
obviously got you into that. Well, he he told me about this um, opportunity in in Italy. So there's a sound film festival in Italy every year called the Pordenone uh, mm. Sound Film Festival, right. and it's in in the sound film world yeah. sphere. It's super famous, yeah. and and they have a a program that they run called the Masterclass Aspirants. Um, um, uh, course and and that's for people who are interested get, in getting in so you apply okay and and, and I, I maybe john put his name put my name forward and said uh, gave me a nudge and 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 uh, and i got a chance to you know do the do the master class program and and uh and that's just a fast track introduction into yeah. playing you know mm. and you have to do these workshops in front of uh, an audience uh, with some really experienced uh, oh. musicians Ooh. I, and you know you have clips of film and you have to play and then yeah. they give you ideas and tips on yeah. how to survive uh playing for unseen film and then at the end of the week you go in the big theater and you play a fazioli and oh. you play for a, an unseen film for how uh, long it's about it's about an hour and a half oh so you, my god! so you've never seen the film no do you get like a synopsis of what's going on beforehand yeah, you have a synopsis, yeah. yeah. What Sometimes you see, I mean, these days, because of YouTube, I mean, lots of things make it online. So you, yeah. can, you can get a heads up yeah. you know, if you're playing through and when you When you're doing something on scene like that, what percentage of you is looking at the film and, and at your hands? <laughs> For example, you know, because... percent of my hands. How much? How much? <laughs> Tw- how much? 90%. Um, <laughs> on your hands. It's terrible. It's, <laughs> what, okay, what should the percentage it be? It should be about 5% on your fingers really? or less. Really? Yeah, I think so. If you really want to play for the film, you need to watch it. Yeah, you know, right well, that's going to say, if it's unseen... I presumably you you just have to be glued to it. Yeah, no, but then you have to you have to this action, you know. I've yeah, to, yeah. Um, so but I, John I, must have seen something in you I, to put you forward for things like that. Yeah, I guess so. Um, mm. I, I mean, I don't think I let him down. I mean, I got. I got offered a spot at the BFI after that. Yeah, you were you were um, the, you were the resident there, weren't you? Yeah. The well, resident accompanist at the BFI. There's about five or six of us, I think, yeah. maybe more. And um, and then when you when you get that gig, how many per year, let's say? Uh, not so many these days. Right. I, I don't know where I am on the you know on the, on yeah. the list. Oh, so know, they would just so. call you up like. Yeah. Jenny calls you at EMB. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Knocking on the door. And, uh, Did you enjoy yeah. it? Yeah I, lo- I love, yeah, I love playing for the uh, playing for the silence. Yeah, I and, mean, it depends on the film. Of yeah, course. yeah. You know, I've been put through some. I, I think twenty thousand leagues under the sea was probably the most torrid experience I've had playing for a silent film. Um, mm. It was the first experiment with underwater filming. Right. Uh, well, they had been yeah. incorporated incorporated mm. into a film, if I remember right. So they obviously the filmmakers got very very excited that they could film underwater. Yeah. So on it went, hour after hour of underwater <laughs> filming, <laughs> of pretty much nothing going on. And so you know, I was literally treading water for for hours, and that 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 can be that can be testing. Yeah. Mm. And um, but when you get a great film, yeah, and you're in a good place, yeah, it's really super. It's really good fun. Yeah. And and did you find the more that you played for film? that your improvisations got better and you tried new things and then you sort of build up your catalogue. Yeah, there's definitely a loop. Yeah, there's and... a bit of a kickback from playing for film. Yeah, your, yeah. your style starts to mm. uh, shift in that direction. And, yeah. And because, uh, I mean, when, when you... When you, when you look at what's going on in silent film, they, they start to come together, ballet and film. you Because you, a silent film, you know, extremely similar because it's all mine. You know, yeah. you're playing for yeah. mine. Oh, yeah. And also you're looking in the sc- in the film, either intrinsically in its editing or in the action or what's going on, you're looking at rhythm, you know, you're yeah. looking for what is happening. Yeah. You know, if, I mean, it can be sometimes, it can be really simple, you know, if people are marching, then hey, off you go. You stay, yeah. yeah. March. Yeah. If it's trains, you play train music. Yeah. You know, you have lots of, uh, lots of tropes which sort of you can you can pull on in the silent film yeah. world you know and, and use and then the in between you you know you explore um uh, whatever you can you know and 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 in the early days when you said you only knew c minor then f and a flat how did you learn about harmony no, i haven't got to a flat yet oh sorry <laughs> <laughs> two minor keys mm. how did you learn about harmony then i think with jazz i got involved okay. with yeah. a bit of jazz at one point just like playing with singers and mm. and then it was like this revelation of uh, the cycle of fits you know yeah yeah. Mind and then, uh, yeah yeah and um and then uh i haven't really got much further than that but um <laughs> you don't need to get further <laughs> in a cycle of fits <laughs> and, um, and then did you bring your silent film work 
into the dance class. Yeah, like with rhythm and texture yeah, and harmony yeah. as well. Yeah, I mean, you can start to ex- you you start to use the class to explore mm. different textures, you know, and then you can. I find it hard to bring things I discover in class into the silent film. I think that takes a long time because oh, you're in, under such duress and yeah, in the film. Yeah, yeah. That because you, that's what John says he does. Obviously, he's a fantastic dance pianist, yeah, mm. but you know, he will explore his improvs for the film yeah, in you can class. He- yeah, you can hear that. You yeah, know, when you listen to him play, it, you, I mean, it's a, it's a visual spectacle in, mm. in your, your party in your head, you know, listening and yeah. um, to John play. We know. watched him play a film, didn't we? Yeah, a we couple went, of years ago. A couple of years ago, after he, he came over and did the in conversation, we went to the cinema the museum, cinema didn't museum, we? Yeah. I can't remember what the film was. We took Kiko's mum because she was here. Oh yeah, it was yeah. the most it was the most exciting evening. Yeah, he was. It's a super place. Yeah, and I think really Colin was on before him. Mm-hmm. Colin Sell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. he's great. Yeah. Yeah. Cyrus, you took me to John's silent film many years ago. Can you it, remember what film oh. it was? It was actually old Japanese film. Nice. It was, a was it an Ozu? Black, yeah, maybe it was yeah, it uh, one of those Ozu. very old mm. Japanese film. And then it was my first time watching silent film. Like, I, I thought, how is he going to play Japanese film? Uh, yeah. But it just matched perfectly. It's a, it's a good question. Yeah, I, I think with the Ozu films... It's, it's that's when I get the most stressed out about how am I going to play for this? You know, yeah. How am I going to uh, stay true to my uh, very Western sense of music? Yeah. You know, and not play play something ridiculous. You know, yeah, just do pentatonic uh, scales yeah. for the next yeah. hour or something. Um, yeah, I don't think and so. There's a little bit. I, mm. I kind of I do I, I kind of try and yeah mix the two together. Yeah, you know, and st- mm. just sort of shift in that direction, mm. and somehow it, it seems to kind of work. Yeah. I don't think uh, John played anything like Japanese scale or mm. anything like this. Yeah. It was just a modern harmony, you yeah, know, yeah. European. Mm. Um, but it suited very well. Mm. It was beautiful. Because uh, Ozu had a really long film career, so he made lots of uh, sound films as well. And I, I might be wrong, but I think he, a lot of his soundtracks are very Western. They're quite hot. Okay. They sound quite Hollywood, really, and which is really good. It's not often you have a director who spans the silent and the sound, yeah. you know, where mm. you can reference the kind of music they would have, because they would have had some ex- executive decisions about yes. what kind of music they use for the sound yeah. film. And that mm. gives you an idea of what they would have chosen if they could have yeah. in the silent era. Mm. So so like with Hitchcock and and with those who you can you can listen yeah. to, to that you know mm. and, and then use that as a reference for playing for his films mm. but I, don't, I mean i don't overthink it with the ozu i just sort of it's just what i feel you know yeah. I just play what i feel and have you ever played the same film twice is it different yeah but not not close together and I, I mean i've never had a, a run of playing the same film right i think some 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 a certain film companies do you know if they've maybe made a score or if they've they might go on tour with that film and play, right, play, okay. play that film over and over again. So I don't know what happens there, but but revisiting a film, I don't know. I I, I don't remember it going terribly wrong. Um, the, the 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 problem with playing for a film you do know or you've watched mm. previously is you can start to preempt everything. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. yeah. And is that I, good or bad? I, I think it's a it's a bad thing mm. um, in general because. When you're improvising for a film and you're watching, if you are talented enough to watch the film and not yeah. look at your hands all the time, um, then you you react accordingly to the action that happens on the screen. So if so, if there's an ex- okay, I mean, it's really yeah, naff example. But if there's an explosion, you'll react as the audience processes that in emotion, yeah. and you'll get a synchronicity of, yeah. the, of the sound and their emotion, and then they then you get the impact. But yeah. if you know the film, you know it's coming, and then oh, you preempt yes. that. Sound, so you're waiting for it. And yeah. You, and, 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 oh yeah. And there's not the synchronicity in mm. in, in you know the uh, the the um, well just in the, in the yeah. music and action. So. So, so when you when you get a silent film, you're not given that much time to prep it. I think John said he, he can have the option to watch it the night before, and that's it. It's, if he doesn't every, know, I it. think every situation's different. I right. mean, you might get a film that's really famous, and you could watch it all night long on YouTube, mm. and then you might get something that's obscure they found in the archives, and yeah, and they'll be like, yeah, you can come in, and I mean, in the old days, it, I think you could go in and watch it on the Steam Deck, and mm. uh, you know, at the BFI, yeah, and but you know, it's like, have you got time to go in and watch this film? Uh, yeah. And, yeah. Mm. But when you sit down to play for a silent film, what's the first thing you do? What's the first thing you play? C minor. 
<laughs> I don't, yeah, I, I, you know, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, As pianists. The, the, you can go into a panic mode. If you've got yeah. no idea, you'll just hit a chord and just see what happens. Just yeah. go from there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're relaxed and prepared, then you might process some kind of overture for the beginning yeah. of the film. And, yeah. and if you're really on it, you, maybe you've made up a couple of tunes which you're going to use for the film and mm. as a theme for the main character yeah. protagonist. Or, do you have sort yeah. of like sort of harmonic progressions that you would use for an overture that are sort of stored. Yeah. I think this is where the ballet starts to really creep in. Yeah. If you're, mm. if you've got a film like that, then you can start to really get into kind of grand allegro mode and mm. right. suddenly you just go <laughs> off all over the place and it's fine, you know, because you listen to overtures to films, you know, especially mm. older films, yeah. you know, they just roam all over the place. Yeah. So you can, you can free yourself up. It's a chance at the beginning of the film with the credits just to, Make a bit of a mess. Find your feet. Yeah. Find your hat fingers. And, and then the things are going. You could possibly and, yeah. get a little melodic idea or even just, yeah, half a phrase, and you're like, "Well, yeah, that's nice." And then it'll yeah, come yeah, back yeah, later yeah, on. No, you'll in forget some it weird, Yeah, unfortunately, it'll just go out of your head. And you're like, oh, what's the <laughs> play? You know. And then the same when you're in a ballet class and the teacher sets the exercise. What are you thinking about? Because for us, for me, I'm thinking about a tune mm. that I think works for that rhythm. All oh, that sounds a bit like that. So I've got you know, a bank of tunes that I can use. Mm. What are improvisers thinking when someone sets a tondu, Chris's go-to example? <laughs> it's always a tondu, isn't it? Mm. And a one, <laughs> and a two, <laughs> and a three, <laughs> and a four. <laughs> <You're thinking. laughs> what, what goes through your head during class? And a lunch, chocolate. <laughs> 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 Is it me or my partner getting the kid from nursery? <laughs> yeah. Can I, can I say, that, but yeah. Cyrus can dance ballet. Can you? I no. re- Can I just, but I put him under the bus now because one day I got text message from Cyrus said, oh, can you cover this class at, I can't remember Pineapple Dance World. Uh-huh. Sure. I turn up and there's a guy wearing a dance gear at the bar <laughs> not too, too. <laughs> doing a warm up Cyrus what? next to the piano it was a wind up Akiko and I, I was a... like I hate having another ballet pianist in my class and, like, <laughs> I got, and he's so experienced and he's amazing and I got instant nervous and he's at the bar next to the piano, I'm playing. I was spying on you I was so was nervous was set up. yes he yeah. set me up but ah. I saw him dancing. <laughs> it's very and you've good. Never, you've never recovered. So yet. you did ballet for a bit as an adult. But you were a dancer too, no? Yeah. I've played for a class that Matt's danced. So I did, I, I did I the same. I said, yeah. Matt did exactly the I same. I said, Chris, come and cover my class because I want to dance it. <laughs> <laughs> and then right in front of the piano was you. Yeah, but at least you told him. Sarah didn't true, tell yeah. me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But he's actually very good. So you you understand movement then? Well, yeah, of course you do. Yeah, I can walk down the street. <laughs> he's so dry. <laughs> I don't, but you see, I've had this because in a, in a previous job, one of my many seemingly hundreds of previous jobs, the management was saying, the artistic manager saying, we want the pianists to take a ballet class so they can learn what it's like to do a play. But this was at a vocational school and certainly upper school. I was like, that's not going to do any good, I don't think, because the level that we're accompanying it's not mm. beginner level that's like you, you're teaching you know effectively the next generation of professional dancers mm. here that's like telling them to go and have six months of music lessons to mm. understand music you know mm. on the piano mm. you're not going to pass a preliminary grade or a grade one because you've got <laughs> no you've got no grade it's not going to have the effect that you think it's going to and i fought really hard against it because i didn't think for that it was going to be a valid thing to do but maybe i was wrong i don't know i've never put i've never put on a pair of tights and done a plie yeah um, so maybe I, maybe i was wrong it's very liberating me and yeah, my little is, twink yeah. body <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i miss my leotard it's um but um i think you need to dust it off <laughs> <laughs> do, do you want to book me for a class with raymond and you go and take it and watch him <laughs> whip you into shape <laughs> i remember you said you liked um renata's class that, that's how I got into it. It was I, I'd been playing for Renato, and I think he just got a bit frustrated, you know, with with uh, with my with my tempos, and and he just said, "Why don't you try to do a class?" You know, and I did it, and and uh, and then I really got into it. Mm. I, I, I really went yeah. down that little 
tunnel of of madness. And, so how long and did you do it for? It was about ten years, I think. Wow! No, yeah. really, for real, for real. He can do yeah. all the jumps and things. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was well, that, Aki, thanks for bringing this. Up. Really, <laughs> thank you so much. No, but that's, you're glad you came over to East London now, I Cyrus. I didn't see well, that long coming. But, but, <laughs> but you know, you doing ten years of ballet class means you really understand what you're accompanying. Did it make it, difference? It, it, it did make a difference uh, to everything that I could do in a class. I, I found that. Um, it gave me some sense of, you know, what an appropriate rhythm was yeah. and what an appropriate yeah. tempo was. But uh, but all the the, the, ex, the more complex exercises at the end, like Grand Allegro, I never got to, I never managed to do Grand Allegros and things. Mm. I found that really too challenging. And I still find that really difficult to play for now, mm. just to find the tempos and understand it. But I think as you we went have through, a- you kind of, I, I started to grasp a, a real sort of sense of the gravity of that exercise and... I mean, the Grand Allegro Waltz, right. we've had an episode. We've got an episode coming up about, about the Grand that. Allegro Waltz. And it's, I mean, the Grand Allegro Waltz is one of those things that's just, it's a minefield for mm. everything. It's, mm. I mean, everything's involved, isn't it? It's yeah. like the weather, the mood, the, mm. you know, you, the, the what people have had for breakfast. I mean, it's... <laughs> it's just the same pedal still holding yeah, out. Yeah. Everything's involved with it. It's a, mm. I, I find the Grand Allegro possibly the trickiest exercise to play for because mm. you can't just... If it's a good if it's a good Grand Allegro exercise, you can't just smash out a go to waltz because it doesn't fit. You've got to have mm. something. If you're gonna, I think if you're gonna accompany it well, you want something that actually fits the highlights. Mm. Yeah, and everything in the exercise, and you know, like we said about you know using the old Fiend trick, one bam, bam, yeah. and you know the little yeah. the little stops and everything. Mm. It's it's I find Grand Allegro tricky. I mm. feel like they're getting slower and slower as well. They are. I was just <laughs> yeah. going to say because uh, uh, EMB. I mean, you must notice people are getting tall. Yeah, yes. getting taller, yeah. and that is changing the speeds mm-hmm, we have to mm-hmm. play as we get into the allegros, and mm. and then there's also certain people coming into class to watch, which means people want to jump a little bit higher at mm. times, yeah. Yeah, 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 and things get uh, just just you know more elongated, you know, mm. in every sense, and, yeah. and that means you have to kind of find a whole new sort of mm. genre of Grand, grand Allegro. Exactly, because yeah. what worked 15 years ago doesn't necessarily, what was a golden go-to 15, mm. 20 years ago isn't that mm. now because it's mm. too quick. And mm. then you, you slow it down and it loses all that gravitas and impetus mm. that it used to have. And I said to these two, sorry. That's the Hobson the, the, for those who aren't watching. <laughs> sorry, these two <laughs> in the corner. <laughs> Searching for the word. I played sure. a Grand Allegro recently, like last week for a teacher and it was really bright, like old school Grand yeah. Allegro. It was just very punchy. Nice. Yeah. And it, not like the, like a Grand Allegro I'm used to. Yeah. Mm. Well, because like, if you think and, of like the bog uh, standard, I feel pretty. Yeah. Sorry, like, I feel... Da, 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 ba, ba, mm. ba, ba, was a Grand Allegro tempo sort of yeah. 30 plus years yeah. ago, whereas mm. now it's a medium Allegro yeah, tempo, exactly. isn't it? Yeah, exactly, yeah. And that this particular teacher was forcing the dancers at that tempo. At gunpoint. Ra- rather, than <laughs> 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 rather than slowing them down, yeah. mm. which was... Yeah, it was quite, it was quite nice. Quite nice. Mm. But that is nice to know, though, that some people will still use that tempo. You know, not everything will be comfortable. Yeah. Especially, you know, if, you, if people are lucky enough to get into a company from going to a vocational school or wherever, that you know, Saturday night performances is going to be a damn sight quicker than Tuesday afternoons. Mm. Mm. Because people want to get home and get the last train. <laughs> <laughs> That's Barry Wordsworth. He was a master at that, apparently. <laughs> so I've heard. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly, yes. Um, what's next for Cyrus, then? That's enough. That's fine. You can end end on a high. <laughs> <laughs> with my, with my failed ballet career. Um, you're 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 sought after. Um, I'm oh. free on Monday afternoon, Tuesday, <laughs> Thursday. Um, uh, oh, I think we'll leave it there. Yeah. Thank you so much, Cyrus, no, for coming on. We really appreciate that. Yeah, you're welcome. Yes. Thank you.